What's going on, my Cardano friends? It's your friend Jack here in my mom's basement, reporting again for another daily episode of Cardano Daily. This is episode number four, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about something that I think most Cardano holders should know about, and that is decentralization and the three fundamentals behind it. Now, this video is not going to go too in depth on any of the three fundamentals. We're just going to cover this awesome diagram put together by Cardano foundation or input output hong kong in the cardano 360 earlier this month and i think this is a really good diagram so we're going to take a look at here i'm going to full screen this image and we're going to look at it so the three fundamentals of decentralization um, the three fundamentals of decentralization are network block production and governance now these three boxes are yet to be fully ticked and rolled out onto the cardano main network and we are still working on the network side of things and the government side of things. And there's always going to be improvements that are being made to block production, governance and network as we expand um, and as we move forward in the Cardano network. So decentralization is a huge part about cryptocurrencies that are often overlooked. Decentralization is not taken into account when comparing Cardano versus Solana and the transaction speeds. They're looking at some things that are better on different blockchains, but they do often ignore decentralization and Cardano does this really well. Once three, once these three fundamentals are fully ticked and on the Cardano main network, Cardano is gonna be something else in my opinion. And when regulation comes or when institutions come, they're going to be looking for ways to keep their money decentralized and you know essentially not being able to be manipulated by someone else or one big party is very important so the first uh fundamental we're going to be covering real quickly is block production and block production is essentially staking and it's providing a way for users to participate in the protocol and to create blocks in shelly this will be achieved through delegation stake pools and incentives so we've already started this on the Cardano main network, essentially staking, which is awesome, not only to tell people they can earn ADA by just holding it and staking it, but this is a big part of decentralization too, and allowing people to essentially host these staking pools, uh, and there's no permission. You don't need permission to host one. Anyone can do it. There's no background check. Someone could just go in and host a stake pool. They don't need experience. Yes, they could fail, but they're not risking anyone's Cardano because they're only risking their own pledge or their own resources, really, which is really important for decentralization. Anyone can participate in this process. Now, we're also going to be covering exchanges and the effect they might have on block production and decentralization in a minute here. But stick with me. The next thing for decentralization is governance. And governance is needed in order to manage, update, and improve proposals in a way that involves fair, inclusive voting by its users. So this is actually tied in with block production in the form that people who are staking their Cardano have votes on the Cardano blockchain, and they can vote for different things to happen in a fair, democratic way, where people who own ADA can basically make decisions for the blockchain. It's not one person making the decisions. It's not just the major shareholders. It is everyone who has ADA on the blockchain that is staking it can actually participate in voting, which is really important. This is still kind of being worked on. It's not fully polished yet. And governance is a huge aspect of decentralization that is going to impact how well Cardano does as a decentralized network. And speaking of decentralized networks, network, the network as any physical infrastructure and protocols must also decentralize. We'll achieve this through a shift to a peer to peer network. Now there's a lot to go into with this one article, which I thought was quite interesting was an article by input output Hong Kong. I'll leave a link down in the description where they essentially just talk about decentralization and how peer to peer uh, deployment is going to affect this now right now this isn't fully deployed on the cardano main network they have started doing uh you know evolving their peer-to-peer -peer connection and making it better but it's not fully ready to be deployed on the main network and they have been deploying it successfully on the cardano test net with a small group of people so not everyone has been included in this test net but they are rolling it out and look right here we will soon be launching a semi-public peer-to-peer testnet with the support of a small group of SPO partners. 
to help with initial testing before broadening this out to the wider stake pool operating community. Now, they are looking for feedback. They are looking for ways to basically improve this system. And this is the third pillar of decentralization. So it's very important they do things the right way, as they always do over at Input Output Hong Kong, Emergo, and Cardano Foundation. The people developing Cardano are doing things the right way, taking it slow, taking it steady, and doing it right first time around. Now, that is the three pillars of decentralization or the three fundamentals of decentralization that Cardano is aiming for, which I thought was really important. And I wanted to share this with you guys in today's episode of Cardano Daily. Now, if you want to see this article, it'll be linked down in the description. And if you want to see or want more information on that input out but hong kong has some great papers on decentralization and i encourage you to check them out now exchanges okay how do exchanges play into decentralization and can they affect decentralization negatively and this is really a hard question to answer especially because i'm not someone who knows everything once again i'm just a person a guy living in my mom's basement i could be telling you all types of lies. Who knows? You shouldn't trust everything you hear on the internet, especially not a guy living in his mom's basement, probably. But exchanges essentially offer a really good return often on your ADA for, for them holding it. Here's the thing, though. When you give over the ADA to an exchange, you don't have access to it. There's a lot more risk inherently with this because you can't just withdraw whenever you want. They can freeze your ADA. They can freeze your account. Um, they have KYC, meaning the government can access the exchange through legal and you can become, you know, not the true holder of your crypto, which you aren't when you give it over to an exchange. It's in their wallet. It's not in your wallet, meaning they have uh, essentially the full control of it in the end. So that is important to note, but also 17% is better than the average 5% from staking. Why the heck would I stake on Cardano stake pools? Well, risk is something to keep in mind um, and just having full control of your ADA is something to keep in mind, but also because this 17% is not going to last forever. This is more of an incentive to get people on board. And I don't think it's a terrible thing. I don't think it's a terrible thing. There's a lot of good things that come with having high APYs like this and them actually delivering on them. That's going to get people interested in crypto and people looking into this space. But you need to keep in mind that this is something to be wary about. It's not a for sure thing and you won't have full control of your crypto when you're putting it on an exchange. Another thing to know is even IOHK has partnered with people that give you up to 8% interest on your Cardano. Now this is a little bit more reasonable and there are some catches with this, which I'm going to go over a sec, but Nexo Finance is a huge partner with uh, input output Hong Kong that recently has become a good partnership and they're integrating ADA into their uh, finance products with crypto which is really cool and you can even borrow against it and earn 6.9 percent apr so why stake it well essentially good reply to the tweet here staking on daedalus gives five percent and staking on nexus gives up to eight percent so this person says up to eight percent it's more like four percent at the base level five percent with at least ten percent of your portfolio in nexo token so you're getting paid to participate in events that promote the company now, I don't think this is a terrible thing. And for decentralization, I don't think this is going to affect the long term side of things because majority of Cardano is being staked. And most people who are really interested in decentralization and want to push this even further aren't going to stake on an exchange. Yes, you can have some chances to get better APYs, but in the chance you want to sell your Cardano, it's locked up or you could get frozen when the price plummets or the price goes really high, you could get frozen and stuck on these exchanges because you don't have complete access to your crypto. Now, with all this being said, keep in mind, Input Output Hong Kong, they want what's best for Cardano. So they're not gonna do these types of partnerships if they didn't mean it's gonna be okay. At least that's what I believe personally. Maybe I'm just speculating, but I'm pretty sure Input Output Hong Kong one of the founding partners of Cardano is going to background check Nexo and make sure that they're doing things the right way too. Because after all, the partnerships that Input Output Hong Kong do connect with and do make are going to reflect on their brand and the things they are working on. So I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing, end all be all. I think this is pushing towards more adoption. I think in the end, it's going to be better for the Cardano network. 
And decentralization is still going to remain a big topic with Cardano. And I think it's still going to be pushing more towards being completely decentralized than being in a state of, you know, everything's on the exchanges and there's no hope for decentralization. The exchanges own everything. I don't think that's the case, but that's just my opinion. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. This has been the fourth episode of Cardano Daily. If you did enjoy it, please smash the like button. And with all that being said, I'll see you guys in the next freaking video. Peace out.